hey guys once again welcome to our channel so in today's video as you can suggest by the video's thumbnail that we are going to get started off with a new topic that's atoms elements and compounds before moving on to the topic let's just have a look at the syllabus to see exactly what we are going to study in today's video so here is the CIE 2022 syllabus so we are going to discuss the first three concepts where we are going to state the relative charges and approximate relative masses of protons, neutrons, and electrons. We are also going to define proton number or the atomic number as the number of the protons in the nucleus of an atom. We are also going to define the nuclear number or the mass number in terms of total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. So without wasting our precious time, let's get cough. So the first concept we are going to discuss is about the subatomic particles of an atom, protons, neutrons, and electrons. So, elements are made up of tiny particles of matter called atoms. Now, before I move on, I would like to tell you that atoms are the smallest particles of a chemical element that can exist. And what are elements? Elements are substances that are just composed of a, just a single type of atom. So, this is the basic information we know from these, I think, starting of the grade 7 or... No starting of the grade 7, it might be from grade 4 or grade 5, yeah. So for example, the element carbon, if you talk about the element carbon, you can say that element carbon is made of only carbon atoms and nothing else. Likewise, we have element oxygen, and element oxygen is made of only oxygen atoms. So the corresponding element is made of its corresponding atoms, okay, you get the gist. Now, moving on that each atom is made up of subatomic particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons. This is a new term for IGCSE students that proton, neutron, and electrons, they are the subatomic particles which make up an atom. Their size, the subatomic particles, their size is so tiny that we can't really compare their masses in conventional units such as grams or kilograms. We can't compare their units, we can't measure their units. So a unit called the relative atomic mass is used, it's a special unit. So we are not going to measure their masses in kilograms or grams. It is so tiny that we can't really compare their masses in these units. So we, off, we use a unit called the relative atomic mass. Now, one relative atomic mass unit is equal to the mass of a carbon-12 atom. All other elements are measured relative to the mass of a carbon-12 atom, and since these are ratios, the relative atomic mass has no units. Okay, so whenever you're re measuring relative atomic mass of these protons, neutrons, and electrons, you will notice these relative, these uh, subatomic particles, the relative atomic mass has no units, since these are ratios. Now, hydrogen, for example, if you consider the element of hydrogen it is made of hydrogen atoms and it has a relative atomic mass of one okay in total meaning that 12 atoms of hydrogen would have exactly the same mass as one atom of carbon as i said before that we are comparing uh, that we are measuring their comparing their masses in conventional we are not comparing their masses in conventional units we are just measuring relative to that related to the carbon 12 atom okay as I discussed in the fourth point, that was one relative, one relative atomic mass unit is equal to the mass of a carbon-12 atom. Now, moving on, the relative atomic mass and charge of the subatomic particles are shown below. So here you can see clearly that uh, we have protons, neutrons, and electrons. All right. Protons have a relative mass of 1. Neutrons have a relative mass of 1. Electrons, almost negligible mass, since... It has a relative mass of 1 over 1840. It has a negligible mass. We don't consider it as having a mass. Talking about charges, so protons has a po proton have a positive charge that is plus 1. Neutron is neutral in charge, so it has 0. Electron has a charge of minus 1. Now, before I move on to the next concept, the proton number and the uh, mass number, I would like to discuss the location where they're exactly located. Now, if you talk about the location of the protons, neutrons, and electrons, the protons and neutrons are always found inside the nucleus. Okay, so you might have seen the structure of an atom. If you see the structure of atom um, using a microscope, 
or using using like if you see the structure of it in any book you will notice that the protons and neutrons are located in the center they are exactly fixed in the center and electrons are formed in in the shells and they orbit the nucleus okay they are moving in orbitals they are just um, hovering around the atom like like they are hovering around like a fly hovering around a street they are randomly moving um, they are found in shells okay and already we discussed that charge in terms of charge if you talk about the protons have a positive charge neutrons have a neutral charge they are zero and electrons have a negative charge and protons have a relative mass of one neutrons have a relative mass of one and electrons have a negligible relative mass of one over 1840 which is essentially zero so we don't consider we don't uh, we don't take that into account now moving on to the uh, next concept that we have to discuss is the defining the proton number so what exactly is the proton number now the proton number or the atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom okay is the number of protons in the atom okay and the symbol for this number is z which i'm going to show you how will you donate when you're writing an element when you will write um for example, you're writing a formula for the element. I will show you in the upcoming slides that how will you donate it and how and what by what letters these are donated by. Okay. Now, if you see the periodic table, there are many chemical elements on the earth and the periodic table summarizes all of them into single table. For example, if you refer to your periodic table, you will see there are many chemical elements um, and almost all of them are mentioned. And what, are, what these chemical elements tell you is that not only does it tell us the full names of all the existing elements and their respective shortened symbols, but it also gives an important information regarding the structure of a single atom of that particular element. For example, if you see the atom of uh, hydrogen, okay or if you see uh if you see this structure here for example now here we are going to talk about the structure how it looks like the x represents the chemical symbol for the element for example if you talk about lithium or let's say helium okay now helium has a symbol of capital h and e and you can see the atomic number and mass number the atomic number is always smaller okay and the mass number is always the massive one so we'll be discussing that. So firstly, I'll, uh, it is also the, the, the proton number is also the number of electrons present in an atom, and it reminds the position of the element on the periodic table. Okay, so proton number tells you both the number of protons and electrons. Okay, so the atomic number is same as the proton number and the number of electrons. Now moving on to the next concept that is defining nucleon number. Nuclear number or the mass number is the total number of the protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom. And that's where um, every only the mass is only, uh, we are to, when you talk about mass, you only talk about protons and neutrons. Electrons have a negligible mass, as we, discussed with, uh, as we discussed previously. The symbol for this number is A. So if you see here, okay, if you see here, you can see clearly that A you can see z is the notation for the atomic number and a is the atomic and a is the notation for the mass number and is the number of the nucleons in the nucleus nucleons are basically the protons the, to to the total number of protons and neutrons all right now the nuclear number minus the proton number gives you the number of neutrons of an atom now if you have an element if you subtract the mass number from the if you if you subtract the atomic number from the mass number you will get the number of neutrons present in an atom and that is an information that is an important information that you will get from the structure of an atom if you have an atom and if you know the proton number if you know the mass number you can get the number of neutrons all right now note that the protons and neutrons can collectively be called nucleons so that's where in the nucleus we have the nucleons and that contains protons and neutrons, and that's where every your mass matters, all right? Uh, the atomic number and the mass number for every element is on the periodic table. So if you refer to your periodic table, you will see that the massive number 
of the element the element the symbol will be given for example we have helium he and you will be given the mass number that will be the massive number that would be greater number and the atomic number will be the smaller number all right so you need to be careful with that now we have uh, electrons now what are these electrons we discussed previously that electrons these subatomic particles move very fast around the nucleus and they move very fast around the nucleus as like they are hovering around like a fly hovering around a street and they move in orbital paths called shell and the mass of the electron is negligible hence the mass of an atom is contained within the nucleus where the neut neutron and proton reside so the when we talk about mass we only talk about protons and neutrons remember that and here you can see the structure of the proton neutron and electron so you can see clearly that proton and neutron are um, are in the center of the are in the center where the nucleus is located and they will tell you the mass and electron you can see they are um, moving randomly they are moving in orbital paths called shells all right now if you take helium for example if you see if you if refer to your periodic table you will see that helium has a mass number of exactly four and uh, proton number has a atomic number of two and firstly what this will tell you now firstly it will tell you the full name and the shortened chemical symbol for the element in this case helium this is fairly straightforward all right now secondly it will tell you the proton number and the mass number of an helium atom and the couple of extremely things important things to remember is that as already we discussed i'm just recalling the concepts the proton number aka atomic number is the number of protons all right is the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom and and the mass number or the uh, nucleon number is the total number of nucleons that is the protons plus neutrons inside the nucleus of an atom and the number of electrons will always equal to the number of protons so if you see your atomic number that is equal to your number of protons and it also equal to the number of electrons now one more important thing to remember this is an example for you guys an atom always has zero overall charge why now the question will come why it has a zero overall charge this is because the number of protons will always be cancelled out by the same number of electrons if you see their atomic number that is equal to the number of protons and equal to the number of electrons so the number of protons is the same the number of electrons is the same so the number of protons will always be cancelled out with the same number of electrons if there was an imbalance then the atom would be become charged and at that point it is not called the atom instead it is called an ion which we will be covering down in the next upcoming videos all right now electron arrangement as we discussed that recall that electron electrons are held in shells and shells are represented in rings around the nucleus so we can see these are called orbitals actually and you can see it's like a ring around the nucleus and it is really important to understand that the maximum number of electrons that a single shell can hold can vary all right for example um, the first shell can hold two electrons up to two electrons the second shell can hold and uh, can accommodate eight electrons the third shell can accommodate eight electrons we'll be discussing in the upcoming videos but our main our main focus was on the first three concepts that we have discovered and that was defining the proton number defining the mass number and we the subatomic particles protons neutrons and electrons the related masses the relative charges so we have covered the goal we have covered the concepts that we were supposed to cover in today's video and in the next video we'll be discussing what we'll be discussing exactly we just uh, go back to the syllabus yeah here you can see in the next video uh, we will be discussing uh, use proton number how we'll use proton number in the simple structure of the atoms to explain the basis of the periodic table c section 9 with special reference to the elements of proton number 1 to 20 we'll be discussing that we are going to we are also going to define isotopes as atoms of the same element which has the same proton number but a different nuclear number and we will also try to i will also try to discuss this the last concept that is the two types of isotopes as being radioactive and non-radioactive so we will be discussing in the upcoming videos okay exactly i can't tell you that what we're going to discuss in the upcoming video uh in the next video but all this we'll be covering in the upcoming videos so make sure 
um, you are subscribed to our channel and the bell icon and you press the bell icon so you uh, receive our, our notifications at first and make sure you like the video share with your fellow friends uh, let me just check if anything is left here yeah almost we are done yeah so this yeah so this is a structure of how it will look like now you can see here clearly that this is a carbon atom and carbon atom there is a symbol that is you can see you can refer with the notation so x was represented by and the element the symbol of the element that was in this case carbon is the element so we are representing with the element with the symbol c and as I already discussed that atomic number is always the smaller number so in this case the atomic number is the lower number and the mass number is always massive it's greater so it's the upper number all right now both the mass and it's an example for you guys both the atomic number and the mass number are given on the periodic table but it can be easy to confuse them so as I discussed previously think that mass is equals massive as the mass number is always the bigger of the two numbers the other smaller one is just the atomic or the proton number and this was the end of the chapter and hopefully we'll be seeing you in the next video where we are going to discuss many of the new concepts stay tuned for that and make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you like the video you comment down below so i can improve my video I can improve my content as per your suggestions, as per your comments. And press the bell icon so you receive our notifications. Take care. Cheers.